Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. If you're new to the channel, my name is Parker Nierenstein. This is Vehicle Virgins, and this morning we are in Frankfurt. Good morning. <laughs> well, that was a total fail. There we go. This is actually my last day with the E63S for quite some time. I've been told anywhere between three weeks to three months to take delivery of this in the United States. But it's been a downright blast. I love this car. It's incredibly fast. Last night off camera, I got to go pretty fast on the Autobahn in this. It's fully broken in. I can't wait till it's back in the US. Let's go drop it off. Look at this tunnel. This is in the parking garage. Every single parking garage is the ultimate place to curb your wheels. This is ridiculous. Well, this wouldn't be a proper send off without me talking about some of the things that I like and dislike about the car. Of course, I'll do an official five things I love and five things I hate. But initially, things I love about the car, the ambient lighting is incredible. I mean, the dual tone lighting, all the options you have, the upgraded sound system is the best sound system I have ever heard in my entire life. And I'm not just saying that because it's my car. Dad, weren't you blown away by it? It's ridiculous, it's right? Awesome. It's absolutely awesome. awesome. The sound of the engine, yes, it's twin turbo, but it still sounds absolutely brilliant. It's also super fast, and I love the way it looks. That matte paint, the selenite gray Magno, they did such a good job with that paint. Things I don't like about the car so far, the turning radius is honestly terrible. Because it's all wheel drive, it's really hard to maneuver in parking lots. Second, when you click the button in order to see the 360 degree surround view camera, now maybe this is something I need to figure out. The first thing it brings up is helping you park. No, I don't want a parallel park. No, I don't want a perpendicular park. I just want to see where the curbs are around me and it brings that up right away. Another thing is the performance seats. I paid a lot of extra money for these bucket seats and they look really cool, but after a long period of time, they're not very comfortable. As of now, that's all I can think of. Let's continue to the drop off. We're in Frankfurt. This is the Porsche dealer right here. That's all they've got. And all of that is Honda. They've got a lot of Range Rover convertibles here too. I don't understand the appeal of that. Pulled the car up to where we believe the drop off point is, going inside. Later today, we are off to London Heathrow, but unfortunately our trip got a little bit mixed up. So I had changed my original flight to earlier in the week because, well, the whole point was to take delivery of the car. Then we changed it back when I found out I could take delivery, but we've got to go to London Heathrow and then take a bus to another airport, then spend the night, then fly back to the United States. So it's gonna be a lot of traveling, trying to figure out what to get as far as content for you guys. They just did an intense look over of the car. This is the shipping company that handles European delivery drop offs. The problem is they just said it might be 12 to 14 weeks before I get to see that back in California. That's so sad, taking delivery of this is a blessing and a curse. It's an amazing experience, but then 12 to 14 weeks till I see it again. Well, the paperwork has been signed. I've given away the keys. I've got the tracking number though, thank gosh, so I can track the exact location of the car. Now I did just remember, I'm doing a giveaway of a Cayman GT4 Club Sport headlight that's been driven on the Nürburgring. I'm gonna put a Nürburgring sticker on it and I can sign it if you would like. Here is the Cayman race car headlight. So all you have to do is smash that subscribe button, turn on the notification bell just to the right of that and I'm gonna pick one lucky winner it's time to say goodbye well this is the perfect send-off I'm getting taken away in a previous generation e-class to the airport watching a Top Gear video here on the new McLaren Senna or the p15 as a lot of people know it I'll be honest, while it's going to be incredibly fast, I am not a fan of the way it looks. The biggest thing, however, is a McLaren needs to set a Nürburgring lap time with this vehicle. When they came out with the P1 and they had their under seven minute Nürburgring lap time, it just didn't make all that much sense. It was supposed to be the fastest road going track oriented car in the world, yet they wouldn't tell us the Nürburgring time and that led everyone to believe that it was slower than the Porsche 918. Well, I'm hoping that they actually lap this around the Nürburgring and get an official time so they can prove that it's as fast as they say it is. Ooh, that M3 sounds good. 
it's almost comical at this point how much stuff has gone wrong on this trip. Obviously, we land, he's got back problems, he goes to the hospital, show up to Mercedes, they delayed the car, and then <laughs> you accidentally plowed into a curb, got a flat tire, got stuck, and then just today alone, last night we show up to the airport to get a hotel. Every single hotel in the airport is sold out. We show up to the delivery center uh, to get my car shipped out, and the person who's supposed to be there early in the morning so we can make our flight, their car got a flat tire. And then we get to the airport, we had reserved the tickets, have the order confirmation number, and they go, actually, we don't have a flight for you. There you have it. But we're trying to make the best of it. Best trip ever. <laughs> Just landed in London, had no idea what I was gonna film today, and Nick gives me a call and goes, oh, we have a supercharged R8 V10 plus, only VF can pull off stuff like that. Well, when you texted me, I thought this is an ideal opportunity. Yeah. Check it out. And it's freaking right-hand drive. So I get to drive on the left side of the road in a right-hand drive car. I've only driven the normal R8 V10, not the R8 V10 plus, and we're gonna go sightseeing at the same time. Let's go. Starting up the R8 V10. Ooh. Oh my gosh, this is terrifying. Ah, oh my God. I've driven the normal R8 V10, the new generation car, 540 horsepower, 5.2 liter V10. This one comes standard, 610 horsepower. It's got a little bit different gearing. It's got better suspension, a nice carbon wing. But the craziest part about this specific car is that it has an 800 horsepower supercharger kit from VF. So what better car to take in the congested streets of London for the first time driving a right-hand drive car than an 800 horsepower supercar. And it's got a brilliant exhaust. <laughs> right away I noticed how easy the RA V10 Plus is to drive. This thing is so comfortable, the steering is nice and tight, the car is just honestly a relaxing experience to drive. The only thing that you notice is that incredibly loud frequency intelligent exhaust. Obviously in London, speeding is not the best idea, especially with all this traffic. Hopefully we'll be able to open it up a little bit. Beautiful carbon fiber bits in the interior. My one main complaint of all R8s is the paddles. That being said, the actual steering wheel itself with the stop start button here, as well as the drive select modes, looks super cool. Pretty interesting design here in the center console as well. Weird seeing my dad sitting on the left side of me while I'm driving. Oh my God, I am driving in England. I feel like supercars of London right now. Dad just pointed out something interesting. The dashboard is so deep. Now in the Huracan, you've got partial leather, partial Alcantara, but when it's one giant piece of leather, it really stands out how big it is. We've got different views here, like clicking the button on the steering wheel labeled view. We've got the center mounted tachometer. Let's go ahead and put it in neutral. Damn, that sounds good. <laughs> that is one beautiful history music. Right. More things I've noticed so far, this car is incredibly easy to drive, more so than the Huracan. There's no indications other than the loud exhaust that this thing is an incredibly fast, super high performing car. Up on the right is Harrods, and this particular one is the world's most famous department store. Look at all the lights. Wow, look at that. Luxury car spotting in London. I feel like supercars of London right now. Mercedes, Rolls, Mercedes, Mercedes, Mercedes. Oh my God, it's Salamandran's Carrera GT. Oh my. For those of you into watches, there's a Patek Philippe boutique right there. The funny thing is people who aren't super knowledgeable about watches think that Rolex is the pinnacle of the watch world, but really it's actually more like the Mercedes and BMW of the watch world, and things like Audemars Piguet, Patek Philippe, Boucheron Constantine, those are the Rolls Royce, the Maybach. Ah! Ah! This is terrifying, I don't like this at all. Oh my gosh, making turns onto the left side of the road is so trippy. Driving in this place is crazy. Obviously it's normal for people in London. Look at this Brabus Mercedes up here. What the heck is that? It's an E300 with a body kit. That's the Brabus Rocket. 
Very interesting covers over the wheels for aerodynamic purposes. I haven't seen a full Brabus rocket body kit in person before. Not sure if I'm in love with the looks, but certainly stands out. Interesting. Oh, it's an EV12. Oh my God, is it a hybrid? What on earth is that thing? I've seen more S-Classes and 7 Series in London in the last 25 minutes than I have in the last six months anywhere else. Speaking of which, 7 Series, S-Class, yet again. Oh, she looks good. All right, time to get going. Coming up on Buckingham Palace here on the right. I can't call that a building. It's more of a palace, I'd say. <laughs> We are going around a roundabout counterclockwise on the outside lane. This is <laughs> weird to say the least. Every time we make a left turn or a right turn, I feel like I'm trying to drive on the wrong side of the road. <laughs> Traction kicking in because it's a little bit wet on the road, but that thing sounds mean. So that's Big Ben right there, but it looks more like a modern apartment building with all the repair and construction surrounding it. Another fun history fact of the day from John, Big Ben is not actually the clock on the clock tower, but the bell inside of the tower. Thank you. Yeah. We've got VF's media guy right there. He's all over the place. The cab drivers drive so aggressively. If you don't basically floor it, there's no way they're gonna let you in. I like the front grills though. They kind of look like Bentleys or Rolls Royces. tourists have to go in the London buses to see around the city, but with VF, you get exclusive access to a supercharged R8 and a tour guide. Thank you so much again, Nick. That was fantastic. My pleasure. Apparently, this is the starting point to a lot of supercars of London's rallies and tours with other European YouTubers. So I feel like I'm almost, I'm almost in the club, guys. Oh my God, I just climbed into the R8 yeah, to move it over there to take a thumbnail picture and I climbed in to the passenger seat. That's how used to driving on the, the left side of the road I am. <laughs> now we're in the correct side of the car. Well, I had a spectacular time driving the R8 V10 Plus. Honestly, an absolutely brilliant car. A little bit less intense than the Huracan, given the fact that it's an Audi R8. I feel like it doesn't seem like it would be a heavily modified car. So in a way, it's a bit of a sleeper. We go. Well, we certainly don't have these little things in the United States. Talk about a compact car. That's way smaller than a smart car. Finally at the hotel after a fantastic day. Thanks again to Nick and the team at VF for making that possible, letting me drive a supercharged R8 V10 Plus. Now I wanna make one correction. That Brabus that we saw was not a Brabus rocket. It was actually called the Brabus Baron EV12. E meaning E-Class, not electric. The crazy part is, well, there's many crazy parts about this car. 800 horsepower, 811 pound-feet of torque. The torque is actually electronically limited. The car produces 1,050 pound-feet of torque, but they have to limit that. It costs $875,000. 875 grand for an E-Class. It's electronically limited to 217 miles an hour. Apparently it's capable of 230. And of course those slats on the side, which I don't really like the way they look whatsoever, are helpful when the car is going well over 200 miles an hour. There's also only 10 of those ever made in the entire world. So the fact that we saw one randomly on the street and the fact that I totally didn't really know exactly what it was, was a little bit embarrassing, but that was a cool spot for sure. Tomorrow I am headed back to the United States. I'm sad that it's gonna be such a long time before I see my E-Class again, but getting to drive it in Germany on the Autobahn, seeing the Nürburgring with the car was a once in a lifetime experience. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you're not subscribed to the channel, join the family, smash that subscribe button, turn the notification bell on. I look forward to seeing you next video. Okay.